Hi everyone, and assalamu alaikum. My name is Lena, and I'm the multimedia artist behind Hijabs and Aprons, which I started just over a month ago. Juggling my blog, Instagram, and YouTube channel on this new journey has been an intense learning experience. And with the new year just around the corner, I felt it'd be smart to start planning my content for 2020. So for this video, I'm inviting you to watch and join me in bullet journaling for January of 2020. I'm starting with a journal I got from Amazon. The brand is Paperage, Paper Age, Paperage. I have linked it in the description. I don't recommend using very inky pens to write in this journal because they'll bleed through the pages as you'll see later in this video, unfortunately. I did test out different pens and will have linked most of them down below, as well as mentioned which ones did bleed through and which ones didn't. I'm starting this bullet journal with somewhat of a title page, hijabs and aprons. Later, I also added the year 2020. Okay, so I wrote hijabs in a calligraphy style where the downstrokes are thicker and the upstrokes are thin. You do this by pressing harder when you're writing in the downward direction, and you press less when you're going upward. I can't get the hang of this like on the first try, so I just fake it till I make it by first writing in cursive, a little more spaced out than you normally would, and then drawing in thicker lines where necessary. I've already drawn out part of the border design in pencil before I filmed, so I'm tracing the main lines here with a Pilot G2 pen, and I'm going in with a Micron pen to draw the florals. Now I'm coloring in the petals with a colored 0.38 marker pen. This is one way to color in the drawings, but later I'll show you another process to avoid smudging any of the black ink that you first laid down. Here's that other way I was talking about. I lay the color down first and then I go back in with the black pen to draw in the outlines. I actually prefer this method. Now I'm writing in the year with a Pilot G2 pen, and then I'll go in with a Pentel brush type pen to thicken the lines like I did for the word hijabs up above. This is like a calligraphy type pen. And here is the finished design. Now I'm starting the page for the year's calendar overview. Here I'm creating headers for each month. Yes, they're unevenly distributed. No, I do not mind. Except for when I cry about it at night. I'm going in with gold jelly roll pen to write in the names of the months. Since I used a darker, more opaque marker for the header color, the gold doesn't show up as much as I'd like. So I'm going in with a black pen to write over it. The gold still shows, but it has a nice thin black line going through it now.
I'm going to use these lowercase letter stamps to title this page. I got this pack from Michael's in one of those shelves near the cashier. You know, where they try to get you with cute small things while you're already in line to give away your life savings in exchange for crafty things you probably won't even have time to use. <sighs> Now I'm pretty roughly measuring the space that the letters will take up so that I don't misalign it big time. I do think stamped lettering adds a nice DIY feel to crafts, especially when the stamping is misaligned a little. I'm drawing in some horizontal guidelines in pencil so that I can write in the headers for the days. I'm starting with a W for Wednesday because it's in the middle of the week. Then I'll write in the M for Monday because it's in the middle of Sunday and Wednesday. And then I'll write in the F for Friday since it's between Wednesday and Saturday. Basically, I'm creating my own center points because I'm too lazy to draw in guidelines for each day, but I'm not too lazy to spend the time and energy eyeballing it like this. I like making things complicated sometimes. I'm filling out the month with the numbered dates. Again, in a way that seems complicated, but it's just a way of figuring out how to align the numbers without drawing in guidelines. You do you. Since February 2020 starts on a Saturday, I'm crossing out the days that fall in January. You can leave them blank if you'd like. You can do whatever you want. Now, I'm circling important dates with the gold gel pen. Dates like my birthday, and my niece's birthday, refilling my chai. Let's speed this up, shall we? All right, once I finished numbering all of the months, I went ahead and used those same stamp letters to write overview at the bottom of the page. All right, moving on to the next page. I've already drawn out the design for the January title page using a lead pencil. So I'm going right in and tracing it with a micron pen. This is the really therapeutic part of bullet journaling for me. Lettering and drawing patterns, that sort of thing. go in with a colored pen now to outline the petals for this type of flower. I'm not going to go back in with the thin black pen here.
Here I'm drawing very thin, like wiggly lines along the edges of the petals to give it the illusion of delicate, like paper thin petals. I'm no drawing expert, I'm just explaining what I'm doing. Now I'm tracing over the outlines of the petals with a color. I actually prefer how the flower looked without this, but oh well. I'm doing that thing again where I lay down the color first and go back in afterward with the black pen to outline the leaves. Refilling my chai, this time with Kashmiri chai, which I have a recipe for on my blog. I'll link it down below. Now I'm just writing January in the center. Again, I'm writing it in regular cursive first and then going back in to make it look like I wrote it in like proper calligraphy the first time. This page is a little weird or out of place. Because this is meant to be my work bullet journal, it doesn't really call for a personal content, but I felt like adding one in anyway. So here's my page for like media to consume, or as I later title it, Munch on This. It's for movies, TV shows, books, or podcasts that I might want to check out later. 
It's sort of incomplete here, but I'm okay with that. I had to add in a penguin. If you know, you know. Now for the content planning section. This is the overview page, which I plan on putting at the beginning of each month. It starts with the statistics from the beginning of each month. So in this case, while people are worried about the ball drop on New Year's Eve, I'm going to be checking my numbers obsessively. Full disclosure. So I'll fill in the information later, but this section is where I'll have the counts for my YouTube subscribers and views, my Instagram followers, and my blog's visits. Here's the calendar for scheduling out my content. I know, some of you might be scared of filling this calendar out in pen, but I see this calendar as more of a goal or guide for the month rather than a strict schedule. It's something to refer back to when planning out content or can act as a reminder for when you should take breaks. I'm all about working hard, but I'm not so into the idea of dying in the process. So I'm using the same colors I used up above to mark what days I'll post to that corresponding outlet. So I've got a red play button for YouTube, a purple square for Instagram, and a blue circle for my blog. By the way, this is the page where the ink bled through because of these concentrated little shapes of ink. So I would recommend maybe using colored pens instead of inky marker pens for this. At the bottom of this page, I'm leaving a section for goals that I might have for that month. My goals for January are related to consistency and making sure I take a couple days off. This is our first page for day-to-day -day planning. I'm starting with a month overview for January up in the corner so that I can indicate which week of January this page is referring to. Whoops, just kidding. I wanted to write in the days of the week before filling out the calendar. There it is. And once again, I'm too lazy to draw guidelines, but I'm happy to eyeball the heck out of this calendar. Here, I'm outlining which week this page is referring to. You can do this with a highlighter too. I recommend using the highlighter before you write in the numbers, though. On to the next daily spread, this time with the overview of the month in the top left corner. So here I'm laying down the color for the referenced week first, because my marker is too opaque for me to use it over top of the black pen. I recommend using a less opaque pen for this though. You can even try a light wash of watercolor paint if you want, anything that's a little more sheer. You might notice I wrote January off center here. No need to worry though, you can just draw a flower or some leaves or a little doodle like I did here. Whatever fits the theme of your journal. Just erasing my guideline here. And now I'm writing in the days. I think I forgot to write in the numerical dates, so feel free to do that if you'd like. Now I'm just drawing in the lines to divide up the sections for each day. 
Yep, forgot the numbers. And I also forgot to film the beginning of this spread where I wrote out the dates in thick block numbers with a silver jelly roll pen. Here, I'm using the black pen to write the names of the days in cursive over top of the silver. You have to go over the cursive a few times though. It's hard to write on top of a metallic gel pen. Since there are seven days of the week, there's extra space for another monthly overview. Or, in this case, a friendly reminder to not worry about the numbers. Now I'm using a ruler to outline the boxes for each day. I've already drawn out the design and outline for this next spread. So here I'm just tracing the vine that I drew around the, the title for this spread, which just says January 19 to 25. After all the ink has dried, I like to go in and erase any pencil lines that I might have drawn in before I started tracing or writing in ink. Another chai refill. And stir in the sugar. Watch it swirl. All right, I'm just clipping the page down here so it doesn't keep lifting while I'm writing. I'm just gonna trace the circles for the dates and then use a ruler to carefully trace the lines for the boxes. When using a ruler to trace over a pencil line, don't place the ruler over top of that line. You want to shift the ruler slightly behind the pencil line so that you account for the size of your pen's tip. Otherwise, if you put your ruler over top of the pencil line, then your pen will draw the line to the side of the pencil line and just watch what I'm doing. See what I mean? That was stressful. I kept the dates really simple here, and if you'll pay close attention, you'll notice I cannot count correctly. However, please note my excellent consistency in making errors as I now try to fix my mistake with another. I still had 24 in my mind, so I wrote TH to make it 24th, but instead I wrote 23rd, so here I am fixing that. Then I'm going to go back and further ruin all of these neat numbers. It's okay. If the worst of my problems is my mistakes in numbering my bullet journal dates, hashtag blessed. Really need the chai after that one. Okay, stop. That's enough. Going in to further decorate the dates with some, I don't know what to call it. We draw this pattern a lot when doing Mandy or Henna designs. 
Then I'm going in with a gold gel pen to draw like an accent circle. I kept this last page of daily planning really simple. I divided it into kind of triangles. I just wanted to give you guys a couple of different options when designing your own bullet journal. Like I said earlier, you do you. Now the fun part, drawing in wintry looking tree things. On a side note, let's talk about those cute scissors. I was originally thinking about kind of scrapbooking print material into this journal and I ended up deciding against it, but I kept the scissors in the frame for like the cute factor, obviously. Now on the right side of the spread, I'm drawing in one last calendar with space to track things. You can use this as a habit tracker or some kind of progress tracker. When I drew this, I didn't know what I was gonna use it for, but since filming, I've decided I'll use it for tracking my actual published dates. So in the key underneath the calendar, I'll put um, that a red X is for a YouTube video being published, a purple X is for an Instagram post, and a blue X is for a post going up on my blog. The colors will correspond with those that I used in the first calendar. I drew this pretty vine design to border this area here that I'm going to use for a summary of the month. I erased most of the pencil drawing so that I can go in with my pens without the pencil color affecting the color of the ink. it for the beginning of my hijabs and aprons 2020 bullet journal i hope this gives you guys some ideas to incorporate in your own journal or to organize or plan your tasks or upcoming content at the very least i hope watching me draw and drink a bunch of caffeine was somewhat entertaining Thank you so much for watching and happy almost new year.